for one. I'm going to quit for the day. Hey guys, running through one lane here again. Uh, I'm going to talk today about ambush tactics, as you can see. So we're going to break this down into simplistic um, labels for things. Um, it's a very complicated subject we can talk a lot about, but we're going to keep it nice and simple. So we've got two main types of ambush. We've got the hasty ambush and the deliberate ambush. So hasty is obviously something that we put together on the spot. We notice the enemy moving in a certain area, in a certain direction, and so we want to move to counter that. So we set up a hasty ambush. Second one is going to be deliberate. So obviously deliberate is something that we have a chance to plan out in advance, whether we know the enemy likes to travel certain routes, uh, they like to come into a certain area around a certain time, or there's a certain uh, terrain feature or a certain object in an area that's going to lead the enemy there. Um, so we're going to set up for a deliberate ambush with a lot of pre-planning. Okay, so for our methods of ambush, we're going to keep two main types. We've got linear and L-shaped. So for our linear ambushes, there's going to be two kinds of linear ambush that we can break this down into. The parallel ambush and the perpendicular ambush. All right, and our L-shape, we have the classical L-shape that everybody knows about. And I'm going to explain one more variation on the L-shape uh, that we can utilize if we happen to have a particular terrain feature that puts a battlefield in this area heavily in our favor. Something we can really use to isolate a particular enemy unit. All right, guys, talking first about our linear parallel ambush. Okay, so before we get going on that, we want to talk about what are the objectives of an ambush. Now, in typical military literature, it's going to say that after a period of cyclic or near cyclic firing into the enemy, you're now going to advance into the enemy to either destroy vehicles, to capture wounded enemy personnel, and or documents and equipment and things like that before withdrawing. And that is totally correct, but it also needs to be said that the objectives are whatever the unit commander says. If the unit commander simply wants to cause a couple of casualties and then get out of there, that's fine. If he wants to destroy a vehicle, whatever it is, all right, once those objectives are met, the unit commander is almost always going to make a decision to get out before the situation turns on them. So, in our classical linear parallel ambush, we have the enemy whose direction of march is in this direction. We have my forces, which will be arrayed on the flank. And so now the linear parallel ambush is the easiest ambush to get into because it requires the least amount of coordination of, in the unit commander and in the small units involved, and because it takes the least amount of maneuvering to actually get in place. So, as you can tell, most of our units are arrayed on the flank of the enemy, but we do have units on both flanks and our rear. And the reason for that is very simple. If the enemy happens to be in a very long column of march, or they are a much larger unit than we are, they'll potentially have units here and units here. And so what can happen is when the enemy commander recognizes the situation, he's going to begin to maneuver onto our position. So these units on the flanks and units on the rear are going to screen that unit. When they see that start to happen, they're going to alert your unit commander and he's going to make the decision, hey, before we get surrounded, cut off, and destroyed, we're simply going to retreat 90 degrees away from the ambush. Very important concept there. That way we put the most distance between us and our enemy, and then we're going to continue mission once we reach a designated rally point. All right, guys, we covered the linear parallel. Now we're going to do the linear perpendicular method. So the linear perpendicular method is more complex than the linear parallel method and therefore more effective in causing casualties but it's more difficult to coordinate but it's still not as complex as the L-shaped ambush that we'll talk about later. So as you can see we have our enemy's direction of travel. Our ambush site is going to be set up directly in front of them, perpendicular. Now in classical naval terminology they would, cause, they would call this crossing the T. So the major advantage that we are going to get by doing this kind of ambush is that we get to direct all of our firepower onto the long axis of the enemy. In the Marine Corps, the O331s, the machine gunners, they would call this enfilade fire. Firing is such that the long axis of the beaten zone coincides or nearly coincides with the long axis of the enemy. So the advantage that that gives us is that one, all of my rounds get the chance to do multiple hits. Right, everybody's lined up more or less one behind the other, so the enemy is very narrow and very deep, so every round that we fire has a chance to hit multiple targets. The other main advantage, and probably the most important one as far as we're concerned, is that with the enemy arrayed in a linear fashion, everybody but the point man is unable to orient and to engage straight to the front because of their own people in front of them. So to be able to engage, they will first have to get online under fire, which is difficult to do, and especially while they're taking casualties, and it's going to take them time. Time when they're under fire, time when they're taking casualties. Right now, you'll notice that we still have our flank security, we still have our rear security, all right? 
enemy units, once they recognize what's going on, they're going to maneuver on us unless we happen to destroy them all, which is rarely the case. So at a designated time, the unit commander is going to see what's going on. He's going to get the report from his flank units, his screening units. He's going to say, okay, break contact. So we're going to break contact 90 degrees away from the ambush. All right, once we got everybody up, we're going to continue mission just like the parallel ambush.